can start your, your journey of freedom. Lovely Maria has some if you'd like. Yeah. Uh, when we left off, I was talking about the definition of registration. You're always submitting application for registration for your motor vehicle, for your firearms, for your kids even. What are you doing when you register? Historically, an act of registration was a ship's captain signing over his ship and all chattel contents to the harbour master for safekeeping until he were to return. Chattel contents included anything that could be party to a contract or subject to a contract. Uh, it included the condemned, slaves, those who were in debt, uh, anything that could be loaded onto the dock essentially was registrable. When you register anything, you are actually signing over title to it to the government until you come back and say, give it back to me, I want it back now. The way they, uh, they consider this a, a benefit is because if the government, uh, who is stronger than you, actually owns it, then someone comes and tries taking it, you've got Big Brother who can come and protect you and your property. But the problem is, when Big Brother starts thinking everything that's registered is now his property, then why register it? How many people here, you, you go to court all the time, if you read any of uh, uh, judicial judgments, it'll talk about society. Society cannot handle this. This for the good of society, all the time. Now, a society, as we've said already, is a number of people joined by mutual consent to deliberate, determine, and act for a common goal. Funny thing about societies, they're legal things. There's a maxim in law that says, if you know not the name of a thing, all knowledge of that thing must perish. So, what's the name of your society? The fact is, unless you can tell me the name of your society and a key thing about any society or any societal member, every member of that society will be in 100% absolute unanimous agreement as to the name of their society. They can just pull out a card from their pocket, it's got it right across the top. The Law Society of Alberta, the Law Society of British Columbia. These are actual proper societies. Unless you have a card in your pocket with the word society on it or association, you're not an actual member of any society. You're not. And they don't want you to know this. They talk all the time about you being a member of a society. If someone came to you and said, I'm going to see my best friend. And you said, really? What's your best friend's name? And they went, duh, I don't know. Would they even really have a best friend? No. No court in this land would accept that you are a member of a society unless you knew the name of that society. Human race. Now, one of the ways they look at us, believe it or not, I'm not, I'm a free man on the land, but you guys are all, except with the exception of maybe Luke here who's working on it, you're all considered to be children of the province. The reason they consider, and this came to my, my attention, we have a friend by the name of Digger, we were in a, a, a mall in the parking lot. He's walking through the parking lot, cops pull up and they ask him for identification. We've never seen you here around here before. This was in West Van again, eh? And he's dressed in his work clothes. You want to know who you are? Identification? Well, I don't have to show you any of that, but you have to show me. Show me your identification. So they get in a little talk back and forth. Guy refuses to provide his identification, says, well, what makes you think I even have such a thing? The cop asks him, so you're not a child of the province then? Guy says, no, I'm not. Thank you, sir. Have a great day. Gone. Why do they get to consider you as a child of the province? Listen, good timing. No, no, ask. Ask aloud. I'm going to... What, what was your question? She needs my help. The reason they look at us as a child, or as the, a child of the province, is because you ask permission to engage in perfectly lawful activities. Mommy, can I have a cookie? Would mommy ask for a cookie? No, mommy would just go take a cookie. She's an adult. If you ask permission to engage in perfectly lawful activities when you have no obligation to do so, they get to look at you as a child of the province because you haven't even grown up in your own mind yet, in your own heart, that you don't need permission from anyone to engage in a lawful activity. You cannot get a license for anything that's unlawful. You can't get a license to do B&Es. You can't get a license to, uh, to commit, uh, I don't know, arson. None of these things can you get a license for. You, they can only license completely lawful activities, otherwise they are licensing an unlawful activity and they can't do that because then they're conspirators. When you stop asking people for permission to engage in things that you've got every right in the world to do, they must look at you as an adult instead of as a child. 
and it's sad. You go through your entire life. I mean, you. Some of us are over fifty, and at what point in time do we grow up enough and say, "Listen, I'm not asking anyone for permission anymore. I've got every right in the world to do this." Um, one of the things that he almost touched on, that Luke almost touched on, was the the concept of money. What if I told you there is none? There is actually no money in circulation. Money should be redeemable for something of value. The money that you have in your pocket, it's not really money, it's a debt note. And uh, it doesn't actually, it's not worth anything unless the government says it is and we will accept it for tax payments. That's the only reason it has any value whatsoever to it. Other than that, it's not backed up by anything. It used to be you could take your money in, you could say, yes, I want my gold. And they would give you gold for that paper. That's what it was worth. Now you bring it in and you can't redeem it for anything. It's all debt based. Now the beautiful thing about this is that if the government creates a situation where there is no money, they can't then turn around and demand payment from you without giving you some sort of big out because if you are in debt and you don't have money and they've taken away your tool to deal with your debt, you're in permanent indentured servitude. You're just a step above a slave and that's unlawful. They had to give you a remedy, and they did give you a remedy on how to deal with it because there is no money. So how do you deal with the government if they come and they demand payment and there is no money? We'll touch on that later. The big one that they don't want you to know, the third day, if you just take one thing away from this seminar, the biggest secret they don't want you to know, you actually have the power to fire them. They don't tell you, they don't make the forms apparent and available to you. They, they will not create forms for their ass to be fired. You can. You can create notices of understanding, notices of intent. You can serve it on them. You can claim the right to exist without them being your boss. Now, the beautiful thing about a claim of right, it doesn't matter that you have the right. What matters is your understanding, your belief, your honestly held belief. And the reason is, in order for them to bring any prosecution, to, there's, there's a two-pronged test. They must ensure that it is in the public's best interest to bring this prosecution. They must ensure that they have a fair chance of a success, or a reasonable uh, chance of a successful prosecution. Now, if you serve a notice of your understanding and intent and a claim of right, and you go through this, they don't respond. You then get a thing called color of right. Regardless of whether or not you're right or wrong, the fact that you honestly believe you do, you are, is enough of a defense, and it's an ironclad defense. They can never bring charges against you because it fails that one prong. So that's why the claim of right is so powerful. And remember this, all they are is human beings. That's all they are, are human beings. They want you to think, oh, I'm a cop, I'm a police officer, I'm a sheriff, I'm a judge, I'm a bureaucrat, I'm this, I'm that. No, all they are are human beings playing roles, just like actors on a stage. You step outside of their theater of operations, they try stepping off that stage and say, hey, uh, I'm King Tut. No, you aren't. You were King Tut in your theater on that stage. Right now, you're just Joe wearing makeup and you're a fool. Get out of my face. Remember, they're just people. Now, in my deconstruction of these acts, what I found uh, for the next little bit, I'll talk to you about their six big tricks that I noticed that they use when they're trying to get you to give up your power. Smoke, mirrors, camouflage are the first three. They always use them in conjunction. The mirror is the first one. Bear in mind, we are not existing at law. Your person doesn't exist at law, it exists in equity. Now imagine for a moment that this was a mirror, and I stood right next to it, you saw me, you saw my reflection in the mirror. You would see two of me. Sorry for your luck. <laughs> but one would just be a reflection. It would be very easy for you to determine which is real and which is the reflection, and that reflection would be very apparent to you. Why? Because you would see the edges of the mirror. Now, if we take smoke and we use some smoke that irritates the eyes, too many of these words that you don't understand just to hide the edges, the wherewithal, the therein's, the wherewithores, all of these crazy, silly words, the, the excess wordiness within the acts and the statutes, this is meant to do something. It's designed this way. It's meant to irritate you. It's meant to make your eyes tired. It's meant to make you lose sight of the edges. If they make, if they then hide the edges of the mirror, and then they use their third tool, camouflage, and they completely hide my body. So all you see is the reflection. You are not aware of the edges, and you don't even see me because I'm hiding behind some sort of camouflage. You're going to think this is the real human being, and it's not. And you can tell because you'll walk up to it and go, 
Holy mackerel, that's glass. Hey, what are you doing behind that curtain? These are the big tricks that they use because the mirror that I refer to is equity. That's where your person is. It's merely a reflection of what exists in law. It is not law. The other one that they use, slider. Anytime you go to one of their government offices, they give you a piece of paper, they put it on the counter, and you hear that sound, they're sliding you something. They want you to pick it up, and that's a voluntary choice on your act. Every time they slide something across the counter for you, step back, because they need you to pick that up, they need you to act upon it, and otherwise they have no power. The other one you've heard of switching the bait, where someone's trying to sell you something and they show you a really nice car and then they, sell you, they give you something that's similar, but they've switched the bait on you. What they will do, and they, they're very clever with it, they will create these <coughs> words which will cause you to believe that you have an obligation to go to them and engage in a certain specific action. If, however, you closely examine what it is they're presenting to you, you realize that you never had any obligation whatsoever. They just make it seem that way. If we were to tell you, you must come to our party through the front door, does this create a, an obligation upon anyone to attend the party, or does it merely define the parameters that if you accept them, we can then claim you are in our party and therefore we have authority over you? When they tell you, you must submit an application, they're not saying you're obliged to beg. They are defining the parameters, that, that framework, which will give them authority over you. You have no obligation. And the, the last one is hiding a monkey by putting a bell on its tail. Imagine for a moment I walked into a, a, a restaurant, a bar, or your party, and I had a little monkey on a leash, and a bell was on its tail, and my monkey started chucking dumplings right at you, smack right in your face, and you said, hey dude, stop your monkey from chucking dumplings at me. And I said, monkey? That's not a monkey. See the bell? See how it's attached to a furry prehensile bell holder? Clearly it's not a monkey. Monkeys have tails. This has a bell, therefore it's not a monkey. And you'd say, really? Okay, well where are them dumplings coming from? <laughs> they hide the biggest truth right in front of you, but because of the way we have been conditioned, we just automatically turn away as soon as we hear that little itty bitty bell. And I'll show you what that is later. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> They're tricky words. The word must, legally. Must is a very funny word. It has two senses, two meanings that are very different. One is active, one is passive. One will generate an obligation upon you. You must breathe to live. Creates a certain parameters that if you don't accept that obligation, you are going to suffer consequences. The other must is merely a directive. It defines situations which, if accepted, will grant authority over you, for, or will grant another party authority over you. They use it a lot with the words application, submission, and registration. If you look in your motor vehicle, or your Traffic Safety Act here, I believe it's called, it states that the owner of a, of a motor vehicle must submit registration in the form required. Again, they're not telling you we're obliged, and every cop will read it. Oh no, it says must, you must do it, you didn't do it, bad. But if you say, well, what's the word apply mean? Let's look at that. Clearly, the word must is not being used in a prerogative sense that creates any obligation. Um, there are other four tricky words, especially if we're looking at trying to free ourselves to be able to exercise certain fundamental rights, like the right to travel. They use the word driver. Oh, you're driving a motor vehicle. Are you actually a driver, though? Historically, a driver was someone who earned their living on the highway. They were a coach operator or a coach driver. They were paid to transport goods or people on the highway. That was what their job was. They distinguished back then as little as 70 years ago. I mean, I, I can, my dad still remembers when they started coming out. Oh, no, you don't need it. You don't need it. But if you wanted to use your vehicle to be able to make money on the highway, oh, yeah, it's good to have it registered as a motor vehicle. Get your license. You're not a driver unless you're, you're doing commerce on the highway. Um, they distinguish between a driver and a passenger. A lot of times the cop will come to you and they'll claim, oh, you are in the passenger seat. You're the passenger of this car. If, if you accept that you are the passenger of the car, that cop then will have authority over you under the Traffic Safety Act. There's specific room in there for them to claim you're a passenger. Uh, if, you, if you're beaking off to the cop, say, he could claim stuff. 
However, a passenger is someone who has paid to be in that conveyance. You're not a passenger if you're just traveling with someone and uh, all you are then is a guest. So there's guests, drivers, passengers, and travelers. If you're a driver and you have a passenger, then there's an exchange of money. If you're just a traveler with a guest, there's no exchange of money and it's entirely lawful. Do you remember like, when Luke was talking about his, uh, when we got pulled over uh, and you were asking the questions wrong, the officer said, after mentioning the trade plate, and you were asking the question, he goes, you are the customer, yeah. that is the driver. Yeah. And I just thought, I, like, that has just spun around in my mind. I have never heard that. You are the customer and he is the driver. I'm speaking to him. Yeah, that's what they try to do. And then because you're you're now apparently engaging in commerce on the highway, now they've got a claim over it. So that's what they try to do. And they will use these tricky words. And in court, no one will tell you what it was. Oh, were you a passenger of the vehicle? Yes, I was. Okay, thank you. When you can say, no, I was a guest. Is it possible that most of those people, they know the word, what they're doing? Whether or not they're aware or not, they have a duty to be aware, they have a duty to do diligence, and if they're not doing any of those things, it's time to fix it. And there's ignorance of the law is no excuse, especially for an armed peace officer. That's what I would think, and I think a lot of them do know. One of their other tricky words is confiscate. I'm going to confiscate your vehicle, I'm going to confiscate your beer. The word confiscate, look it up legally, you know what it means? To remove without legal right. To remove without legal Yeah. Right. To remove without legal right. So you tell them what, you're going to steal my stuff? No, I'm confiscating you. You're removing it without legal right. That's I that. that one. They use words like give. I'm going to give you a ticket. Yeah. Give is a gift. Hey, guess what? I'm not in the mood for gifts today. Thank you very much. I didn't bring anything in return. They can't do anything. They want to give it to you. You accept it. And now they have a nexus. But if you say, nope, sorry, not in the mood for any gifts, fine, I'm issuing you a ticket. Issue is another sneaky word. Really? You think I'm in the army? <laughs> what are you issuing me? Prove that you have the power to issue me anything. Issue normally goes to uniforms, weapons, and ammo. That's what gets issued. You're not in the military. You're not bound by it. So if you physically don't pick up the ticket, <coughs> throw it into your you just tell him I'm not, I'm not accepting gifts. And he'll say, okay, fine, I'm imposing it or I'm issuing it. Really? You can't issue, I'm not in the army. I'm imposing. Show me your right to impose anything on me. But I'll deal with violation tickets. There's a far better way to do it anyways. What we're going to look at now is the fact that since we're all equal, what this all is about is about becoming spiritually so morally above them that they can't even make any claims against you. If we recognize that we are all equal, Recognizing this, who can make demands on you? No one. Who can make orders upon you? Nobody. What they can do is bring you an offer and do it in such a way that you think it's an order, it's a command, and I better do it or else I'm in big trouble. Now, you can get in trouble by refusing offers. And it's a matter of honor and dishonor. So that's what I'm going to talk about. Imagine for a moment like a, people received invitations to Luke's party here. If you didn't come and then you didn't, you didn't even call and say, listen, I can't make it, he might feel a little bit dishonored that he's gone through all this work trying to put a big party on you guys didn't even show up. So imagine this. Who here is married? Marys? Okay. Imagine you're sitting at home, you're watching TV, the big game's on, your loving wife is in the kitchen and she calls out to you, honey, will you take the garbage out? And you ignore her. She asks you three times, honey, take the garbage out, will you take the garbage out? You just ignore her. Are you going to get any love in that night? No, you've dishonored her. She's not going to be happy with you. Now let's suppose she says, Honey, will you take the garbage out? And you yell out, No, flat out rejection. Is she going to feel honored or dishonored? She's going to feel dishonored. You can say, Yes, this is what the government wants. And anytime they bring you a notice, an offer to pay, anything like that, what they want you to do is say, Yes, honey, I'll do it right now. You get up, you take the garbage out. Good chance you might get some loving that night, but you missed the, the big game. There's a fourth option they don't want you to know about the government. You've got every right to do it. It's called a conditional acceptance. Honey, will you take the garbage out? 
I most certainly will. I conditionally accept and I will do that right now if you want. If you can establish to me that A, you can't do it, or B, I can't wait for a commercial, and I want a promise of some loving tonight. <laughs> You can attach whatever conditions you want to this. And if you do this, they can't claim that you are in dishonor. They can't claim that you said no. They can't claim that you ignored them. Never ever ignore or say no to a notice. You take a notice. It's an offer from them. They are trying to gift you something. It's not something you want, so you conditionally accept it. And there's a number of ways to, diff to do that, and uh, in the package there's some examples of a conditional acceptance. And all you are going to do, like uh, when I was working at here on, here on Earth, it was an after-hours club. And I was, it's a funny story. I was there, I, was, I wanted to get back into comedy, so I saw this, this sign where they were doing comedy at this after-hours club. So I call them up and I said, hey, uh, I want to do some comedy. Well, we're thinking of shutting down, liquor control board has shut us down three weekends in a row, we're sitting here talking about shutting down. I'm like, I'll be right down there. Boom. Went down there, looked at the Liquor Control Act, they paid me a hundred bucks, I deconstructed it, wrote a letter, said open up on the weekend. Weekend comes, they open up, liquor control inspectors, they're in the alley like this. They had no power. I pointed out that according to their act, their only authority is over those who have been issued licenses or those who have first applied for a license. In the face of someone who has never asked them for permission, they had no authority whatsoever, and I pointed that out to them. So then they came with the property use inspector, put a notice right on the door, uh, notice no entry, uh, property use not a, took that notice right down, said okay, wrote on the back, notice of discharge of notice. I see your notice, I've got questions, and I'm discharging it by way of seeking clarification. I know you're trying to talk to me, but I don't really know who you are or what you're trying to say. So answer these questions, do, 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 20 questions, boom, give it back to them. Open back up, they couldn't do anything because it's playing tennis, now the ball's back in their court. Then they came with uh, business, business bylaw, you need a business license, put a notice right up on the door, rip that one down, did the same thing, do, 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 here you go. By this time, I mean, there's cops all over the place, then they ended up coming with the fire marshal. Fire marshal, we're like, we love you, we want you to inspect this, we want to make sure it's safe, last thing we want is for anyone to die, so yeah, come on, walk in, and we'll pay for the inspection. He's like, no, no, we can't accept money from you, but we have to do an inspection. I'm like, okay, fine, but just don't think that we are in contract with these people, and it was the, uh, the bylaw enforcement officers there, right? Eh? We're not in contract with them, so if you, this is a free service, fine, but if it's a paying service, we get to pay for it. No, no, it's free then, so they do a walkthrough, they come out. Yeah, fix that light, keep that door open, and uh, we got no problems here. They're talking to the cops and the people in the alley. Don't bring this on us. We are not into politics. We're here to fight fires. We're not doing this, and they walked off. Took me five weeks. I got the cops coming to the door. They'd knock on the door. They'd identify themselves as peace officers, only wanting to do a walkthrough just for the purpose of keeping the peace. They would walk around. People thought I was paying off the cops. We were in there drinking beer, smoking pot, cops couldn't do anything. And one time a cop car came up, so what's going on in there? And I'm, I'm out there, I was living upstairs by this point in time, so I was claiming it was just my apartment and I was having parties a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm outside in, in silk jammies and a silk little nightgown, eh? And I'm sitting there smoking a cigar, and cops pull up, what's going on in there? I said, oh, that's a celebration of life. He said, well, do you have a permit? I said, you need a permit to celebrate life? So, well, we heard people are breaking the law in there. Wait, what do you mean? They're smoking pot. I said, so? Well, that's against the law. What law? The Controlled Drug Substance Act. I said, that's a statute, not a law. Your failure to distinguish between the two is gross negligence. That's equal to fraud. When you come up and you start making claims against us like that, interfering with our pleasure, that's mischief. That's an indictable offense as well. Furthermore, okay, bye. <laughs> they just drove off, never had any problems with them after that. If you start recognizing that a notice is actually an offer, and if you ignore it or you say no, you are in dishonor and you will lose, you learn that. Deal with your notices. If they try sending them to you, slam them right back. Pretty soon they don't even try bothering sending you notices once you know how to deal with them. One of the things that I'm noticing in this whole truth movement thing is that we're all trying to get a, a higher level of freedom. But the big problem is freedom requires responsibility and that's why so many men fear it. You have to be responsible for your own life to a much higher level than you have been now. 
I look at the government like a nanny. And a lot of people refer to it as the nanny government, the nanny government. Well, let's look at it that way. The nanny does have a certain amount of power. If you're running around pooping your pants, nanny can and will put a diaper on you. Let there be no doubt that nanny has some power. If you're running around throwing tantrums, nanny can and will lock you in your room and you're silly to doubt that she can't do that. Oh, I don't consent. Big deal. Stop throwing a tantrum. They'll do it anyways. If you're being rebellious, like a little teenager, you know, stomping your feet, nan and nan, there's a lot of freedom activists out there who are of this caliber. They're just going to look at you like a rebellious teenager. They're not going to let you out the door because they don't want you going causing troubles with the neighbors. But when you get to a certain point, when you realize, hey, listen, I'm the owner of this house. I'm an adult. Uh, nanny, you're not putting any more diapers on me. I'm not throwing a tantrum. And I'm an adult now, and I'm leaving. I'm going out for the night. And I'm telling you, when I'm going to be home, you're going to have breakfast ready. You don't, you stop taking the orders because you start realizing who truly is in charge. Now this does require that we grow up and bring to them love, compassion, and truth. When we operate with this, they will recognize that we have spiritually matured, that they no longer have any power, and Nanny actually loves you at that point. Nanny loves you because then everything that she did, all the diapers she put on you, the time she locked you for your tantrum, the rebelliousness, all of this justifies everything they've done, and they want to see you leave. Because it also gives them, um, it clears up a lot of their plate. I mean, a lot of them are tired. Do you think they want to spend their life putting diapers on us? They want us to grow up. Their biggest fear, from what I understand, however, is that there will be a number of people who aren't spiritually ready for it, and then they're going to try to make the claims, and then they're just going to, you know, harm each other. That's one of their biggest fears. You got to make them want to get rid of you. You want to make them so that they want you out of the house. And you do that by questioning them, by questioning their authority, by questioning the way they're doing things, and by demonstrating that you are ready to leave the house. You simply don't need their guidance and their governance anymore. Now, violation tickets. Who here hates violation tickets? <laughs> Tell you what they're doing there, a violation ticket, they actually, you have never received a violation ticket in your life, I'd be willing to bet. You have received copies of a violation ticket, and there's a very big difference between the two. If this is what's happening now, you go, they stop you, they say, oh, you're speeding here, sign this, you sign the bill, they take the original, they give you a copy, then that original ends up in court if you go to dispute it. What they are doing here, imagine for a moment, that you go to a restaurant, the waitress comes with your bill, says, here's your bill, but I want you to sign it and give it back to me, and I'm going to take it to those, bar the, those bouncers over there, and I'm going to prove that I presented you the bill and that you refused to pay it because of your signature, and they're going to come over and beat you up for not paying your bill. And you say, what kind of crazy restaurant is this? No, I'm not doing that. Give me the bill. And she refuses to give you the bill. So she calls the cop, says, this guy refuses to pay his bill. And you say, no, I'm not refusing to pay. I'm just refusing to pay until I get the bill. If they don't give you a bill, you don't owe any money. And this is what they're doing. That bill, it's a, a bill of exchange. If you look at the definition of the Bill of Exchange and the Bill of Exchange Act, it's defined as an unconditional order in writing addressed by one person to another, signed by the person giving it, requiring the person to whom it is addressed, to pay on demand or at a fixed and determinable time a sum certain in money to or to the order of a third party or the bearer. Look at your violation ticket. Meets the definition to a T. Exactly so. Now under the, the Bills of Exchange Act, if you sign, if someone presents you with a bill, you sign it and give it back to them, you've dishonored that bill. You have just told them, screw you, screw your bill. Yeah, it was in my possession, but it's back in yours. You get a bill, you keep it so that you can establish it was paid. This is how you deal with a violation ticket. People are doing this in, in, well, all over Canada now, and it's working. When they stop you, you identify yourself as a person. They will be assuming they're dealing with a fiction. You don't want them to be thinking they're dealing with a fiction. You identify yourself as a human being, not as a person. You identify yourself as a human being. You then say, I recognize that as a bill of exchange. Present it. Hold your hands out flat. Make him take that original tear it out of the book and give you the original. He's not going to do it. Because if he does that, he can't take you to court. You're in possession of the bill. He will impose the copy on you. And then what you do is you take this copy to a notary public. 
and you say no to Republic, this is a copy of a bill. I invited the presentment of a bill. They refused to even give me the presentment. They even they refused to give me the bill. Now they're claiming that I dishonored their bill. When you go to court, it's not about speeding. It's not about whether or not you, you went too fast, too far, what you did. It's how you dealt with the bill that brings you in court. Otherwise, all they're doing is giving you a bill, you pay, lawful transaction. How can they punish you? There's nothing unlawful about paying a bill when presented. So they're tricking you into dishonoring these bills, and that's what brings you into court. If you take this copy that they give you, bring it to a notary public, say, notary public, this is a copy of a bill. They didn't present the original. I'm protesting this for lack of presentment. They then stamp it protest. You put the notary's bill, you attach the notary's bill to that because you don't want to have to pay the notary 20 bucks to do this. I mean, you weren't even given the bill. Why should you pay anything? You send this off to the third party who was expecting payment. In British Columbia, it's the Minister of Finance. Under the Bills of Exchange Act, he now has three days. He has three days to either represent the bill, find that original bill and bring it to you and say, here you go, it's now properly presented. Or he can claim by affidavit that it was in fact presented properly and it was dishonored. Or that you are no longer liable for the bill, but guess who is? The cop who endorsed it will have to pay that ticket and he can't just break it up because you've attached your notary's bill to it and that notary has to make sure that bill gets paid and then he can get paid. So when you do it like that, what the cops are doing now, if you do that, the cops go, oh, another one. They close their ticket book, they pull out another book, looks very much like it. It's a warning book. And they say, ooh, I've got to give you a warning because I ran your name through the computer. Please slow down, do, do, do. Giving warning, no obligations. Now, parking tickets are a little bit different. Parking tickets generally aren't signed, and all they are, again, is a notice. It's a demand to pay. Imagine, again, you're in the restaurant, the waitress says to you, hey, you owe me money, you over there, you owe me money. And you say, yeah, okay, fine, how much? 20 bucks, okay. And then everyone else hears that and says, oh, he's an easy touch. Hey, you owe me money, too. Yeah, and everyone's yelling at me, at you, you owe me money, you owe me money. Are you going to pay everyone just because they said you owe me money? No. You say, okay, everyone, shut up. Bring me a bill. Who's got a bill? If you're working for a bank, someone sends a notice to a bank, says, you owe me $34. Are they going to ignore it? Are they going to pay it just right off their bat? Of course not. There's a proper administrative technique or administration um, process that we use to discharge any of these notices. All they've done is served you a notice and, hi, you owe me money. I'm switch the tape. Okay. Of it anyway, so you are part of the right, right, right. Unless you specifically and unequivocally state, I am not being giving you consent to govern me. You may be governing my neighbors or whoever you claim to be governing, yeah. but it's certainly not me. You put your name and address and you send it back. Yeah. So if you do that though, then what are they saying? You're saying you don't, you're not part of the system. You're saying you're not part of the system, you don't accept the MP. Are you, saying, are you saying, I voted for somebody else? No, 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 so no, no, no. if you vote for anybody, you're accepting this decision. Okay. okay. If you say, I don't give you the, the right to govern me, you're rejecting all levels of government, okay. from the police on all the way up to the Prime Minister of Canada. And you're saying, I'm going to reside in common law jurisdiction, I'm going to respect the common law rights, mm -hmm. which include no living soul, harm another living soul, and I honor my contracts, that's how I'm going to govern myself accordingly. Yeah. It's not a ticket to do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. It's not a ticket to harm your fellow man. But you are now not bound by the same rules that everybody else is bound by because they chose to be bound by them. Mm -hmm. And you are not hurting your country, you're actually benefiting them. Because you're going to be less of a burden, because now you, you can't receive benefits. Right. Um, if you paid into CP, or CPP and you were entitled to something, you could receive some okay. of what you paid in. Yeah. But if you say, look, I don't want to be consent, now they don't have an obligation to give you anything either. So is that your current situation? Well, that's my situation, yeah. Because, I, well, honestly, anyone before the, below the age of 50 isn't going to get any old age pension. Right. The most money you'll ever could qualify for if you paid into it for 40 years is $16,000 a year. Yeah. Honestly, what is that going to do for you anyway? No, for sure. I'm just saying in general, though. But like, So... For example, your company, is yeah. it, are you registered with somebody in your company? Now remember, a corporation, now let, let's talk about, a corporation is a fiction. Okay, yeah. Right, it's a fiction. Yeah. 
And you, that is clearly inside their box. Mm -hmm. Now, there's still, rem you can still write some letters of claim regarding that. Yeah. But, you know, you are making money in a corporation fiction. Yeah. But there are le legal, I mean, there are lawful ways for you to extract every bit of profit from that after you pay your employees and expenses yeah. to yourself within their own... Uh, their own rules. Yeah. Where you write a letter saying that the company is now absolved of any responsibility, now it's mine, or a, like employee profit sharing is a standard recognized CRA deduction where your yeah. corporation never has any profit to worry about. Okay. It's all been given to the employees in the profit share. Yeah. Now it is their obligation to pay tax. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The but I don't. Yeah. I don't pay tax. Okay. As a person or as, as a, a as a human as a being. As a player. If you don't remember, a person is a fiction. Yeah. Um, when you see your name on a driver's license, yeah. capital letters. When you see your name on any government document, picture McDonald's. So when CRA says, you see what you think is your name. Just remember that's McDonald's. So CRA is now saying, uh, McDonald's owes them uh, whatever they say, uh, yeah. three hundred, you know, three thirty five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. You just look at that and go, wow, geez, McDonald's is it's pretty bad for McDonald's. <laughs> and you know, it's a good thing I'm not McDonald's. And it's a good thing that my McDonald's here by this number, because it's a different franchise, yeah. this McDonald's is bankrupt. It's been bankrupt since the day it was created. So it's yeah. a perpetual bankruptcy. Um, I just manage its affairs, but I can't be responsible for McDonald's here's debt. So. Yeah. And, oh, and I didn't even create this business either. Yeah. It was registered and created by someone else. And it's actually owned by someone else, the Corporation of Canada, the Crown. Yeah. So this fictitious company that the CRA now says owes money is owned by the Crown, so maybe they should sort it out amongst themselves. So what's your plan for this? Like, once you've gone through this, what are you going to do next? Well, well, I'm gonna t well, let me talk about what I'm doing regards the, 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 the registration of a vehicle with a license plate. Yeah. This blue plate with yellow letters of Canada and a free man on the land with white reflective letters of 007 LMD. Yeah. When this plate... It hits that car, and all the paperwork's been done. They're, they might test me a bit. Maybe they tow it. Maybe they pull me over. Maybe they test the waters. But I'm gonna have it on camera. If I go to court regarding this thing, I know how to handle myself in court. Mm -hmm. um, going back to the criminal court, when I walked in there, Menard walked in, and he has his uh, religious headdress on yeah. for his beliefs. And the judge says, "Well, you can't have that on in here." And, and Menard said, had given a letter to the prosecutor explaining his position. Yeah. And he said, "I wear this for my re um, religious beliefs." And the judge says, well, "What are they?" And he goes, "Well, if you want to grab the Bible, I'll show you in Ephesians wh where why because my faith is based on that." Yes. Yeah. Oh, I don't have time to deal with this. You got to leave my courtroom. So Menard leaves. So I go out and talk to him. He goes, "Well, you know what? I really don't want to go back in there without my headdress on. I, you know, I have a right to do so." And I agree. So I said, "Well, you know what? Let me just see what'll happen." So I go back in there. You know what we should have done? Should have given you the headdress. <laughs> have you go back in. Not backed by debt. I mean, when 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 the, the Federal Reserve gives money to the United States government, they print bonds. The government could print bonds, but they don't print their own money. It's so the solution is so simple. It's ridiculous. So I thought the bonds were held by individuals. Yeah, but, but, but the government's going to pay them back. Right. And then the government goes and gets more money printed back on those bonds. So why not just print the money instead of the bonds? They're printing the bonds. Yeah. Well, why don't they print the money? It's, but there's too much political power wrapped around it. I mean, ultimately, when, when, when these people who control the IMF, they control everything, they, they will have an interest to keep that. They fought very, very hard to get that Federal Reserve in place. If we went to the IMF's website... Right. Or the UN's website. Mm -hmm. Or anywhere, really. Would we be able to see a description of what we're talking about here? Not from their anywhere. end. Not dude, from dude, their dude, end. When you get scammed <laughs> by someone who's deceiving and scamming you, yeah. do you expect them to come to you and tell them, Hi, I'm going to play three-card Monty with you, but I'm cheating. These people over here, they're shills, mm -hmm. and uh, we're here to take your shirt. They don't tell you. That's part of the deception. No, but here's the thing, though. And the reason why I ask is because it's perceived that a lot of these things are public institutions. Or Absolutely. Or to help people. Absolutely. You know, become better people. Because or help countries become better countries. Or whatever, right? They're there, and their perception is, is to help. Because that's how okay. you mislead the masses. That's oh, how you get the masses misled. But a lot of people that work at the UN do some really good things. A lot of people that work at the IMF do really good things coming from the heart, coming from the, you know, coming from the deep down. They're doing good things, mm -hmm. right? So, if they wanted to do good things, they wouldn't exist. Well, okay. How do you explain that one? Well, because they're, what they're doing, everybody that 
takes money from the IMF, yeah. is now in debt to the IMF. And what has the IMF done for you? They printed money from nothing. So where can I they, see this? They've only, they, they, look, look at it this way. It is such a fraud when you understand it. The Federal Reserve, okay, let me tell you how it started. Yeah. The Federal Reserve told the United States government, who was having financial problems, mm -hmm. that, you know, we'll print your money. We're going to start the Federal Reserve. So the, you can own 20% of the stock. So the, the, the federal government at that time, uh, I can't remember the exact year, but you can look that up on yeah. Google even. They gave, the now keep in mind, they gave them, these guys that were going to set up the Federal Reserve, $2 million. Okay. They put up, the other 80%, they put up not a dime of their own money. Right. They took the 20% holdings that the, the United States government gave them, they built the building, they bought the, the printing presses they needed, yeah. and then printed money. That's it. They, they committed, they committed counterfeit. Yeah. They, it was complete deception and fraud. The United States government gave people power, paid for them to start it up, and they put on a dime in their own money. But why wouldn't the United States have set up their own? Isn't it their own? A very, culture? very good question. Why don't they do it today? Well, what? But why are they asking somebody else to do? Why don't they just say, "I need a federal reserve because, because I need to reserve my money or whatever it is that they do"? And Abraham Lincoln. And John F. Kennedy, everybody who's tried to make their own money has been shot in the head. This is not a, a coincidence. Yeah. You either play the game or you're done. So nobody's had the guts to stand up to them. And now they're too powerful that if you do stand up to them, guess what? You're going to be taking a ride in an open car. So is there anywhere where we can see... You do your own research and you know this is true. The connection, the IMF, UN, and Bank of Canada. Okay, there's or a... Canada in well, what's, Robert, what's the name of that... There's a there's a eight hour film you can watch. It's on it's on Google. Money Masters. Money Masters. You can look at Money Masters. It's an eight hour explanation from the beginning of time <laughs> till now of this. Okay. And trust me, they got heaps of proof. Heaps. If you just do a search on Google of the Rothschilds. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you look at um, the country of Israel. Even, yeah. How it started. How it, how it be, who was the first country on earth to recognize them? Because they really just, the British just gave them this land while they bought it. Yeah. I mean, they could, <laughs> how much money do you need to buy a huge country in your own? What was that movie again? The Money Masters. Money Masters. This information is out there. Well, and that's what I'm saying. Is I'm heaps. just curious, I'm just curious, like, it, because of course, the public perception and everything that we usually well, let, know. Right? Well, let me ask you this. It's just like when you go to court and they say, and you say, commonly referred to as Luke Denis. And they're like, I have no idea what to do about that because I've <laughs> never had to deal with anybody that's ever said that before. I don't Actually, know what that there's means. there's quite a few people who, who do stuff like this. Oh, before. yeah. No, really? Oh, yeah. You'd be surprised. Like, I'm not the first person to dream this. No, stuff. but still, I mean... Well, let me put it to you this yeah, way. If, I mean, when you work, when yeah. you work a day's work, an average person who works yeah. gets his paycheck and there's a bunch of stuff gone. Yeah. It was hijacked in a, by your employer and given to the government, right? Mm -hmm. And if you were creative and do some fancy paperwork, hopefully at the end of the year you get some of that back. Yeah. But it was yours to, you're only getting what was yours anyway. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? No, I know what you're saying. Okay, no, no, no. When yeah. you work a two week period and get paid or mm -hmm. whatever, did the government participate in helping you earn that? Well, they provided, I guess you could say that they provided the roads for me to get there. <laughs> The roads were paid for by us. Yeah. Not by no government. No, but through a common effort to create the roads, right? The road tape. It wasn't like, it wasn't like... Your fuel somebody, tax, your fuel, like first of all, first of all. individually said, okay, I need hey, a listen, road over here and built it themselves. Let's talk about apples to apples. Right, right? yeah. Your roads were built from the fuel tax that you paid. Okay, that's a common effort, again. It, but, but we're not talking but about the it, fuel tax. No, let's, let's accept this. It's a common effort. Yeah. So it was part of my effort as well. So why should I go pay someone else... Who, let's say it was their common effort as well, but yeah. they're now a bureaucrat, and why should I pay them for it? But that wasn't his original question because you, you threw in a red hair in there. He's talking about you going and spending one hour digging a ditch or something like yeah. this. Yeah. Let's say you walk there, there is no road. You walk there, you work one hour or one day, one okay. week, whatever. Yeah. Now, who, answer his question. Who in the government helped you make that money? Um, nobody. Nobody, yeah, did anybody grab you. that shovel with you? Did they, somebody from the government come down and give you some coffee? <laughs> no. Okay, do you understand the government yeah. did nothing to help you earn that day's wage, that week's wage, that two weeks' wage? Okay, what, now about, your this? Roads what were, about this? What about this? The government 
is there and protects the land. Okay. And now so that is an argument. Exists, yeah. So we have protection. To protect. So you're not afraid of somebody coming shooting, shooting you while you're doing it. Right, right. Let's 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 say this because you seem to think we're anti-government totally, and no, that's no, no, not no, the case. Not necessarily. No, let's say I'm this. Just saying let's suppose that, we like the yeah. roads. We're willing to support them. We yeah. want even better roads. Yeah. The moment we do this, does this mean the government now has the right to come in and dictate how we raise our kids, uh, whether or not we can smoke? Uh, whether or not we can grow and smoke marijuana. Yeah. Uh, what point do they decide, okay, because I gave you the road, now I have control over every facet of your life? Well, I mean... But, but let's laws, go back to the... Those laws are created through, like, a public place called the House Commons, right? Where they discuss legislation... Have and you ever seen them better. at work? Please, if you have ever seen C-SPAN okay. for Maybe 20 minutes, they don't discuss Maybe we'll what. call it discussion. We'll call it whatever we'll call it. Okay, but, but you, okay, you got to understand. They're there and they do stuff. If you want to vote and yeah. you want to be a part of that system, then you are bound by everything they do right. wholeheartedly, pay yeah. your income tax and do all that. Right. But don't fault me for saying I'm not playing that game because I don't of like course. it. Of course. Sure. Okay, so I could stay outside. and But remember, I still fill up my car and I still pay the fuel tax, which pays yes. for the road. Right. I still pay property tax, Although which I pays for the school. Although I that back. Did you request that back? I don't want to, because I like the roads. Yeah. So I have no problem paying the fuel tax. I have no problem paying property tax. Even though I could lawfully say, you know what, this is my property to enjoy. I don't have children in school anymore. Yeah. Um, or or I do, but I'm just going to make sure only my part of the property. I'm not into that. Yeah. Because to me, that's it's cheap, first of all. Yeah. The fuel, the fuel uh, tax does benefit the roads. So I'm very happy to continue to do that. What if I told you this? This is their big scam. All of the rules that they talk about, Income Tax Act, Controlled Drug Substance Act, Firearm Registration Act, all of these are actually rules that are put in place to control government agents and employees. That's all. They were meant to stop, make sure that we never get a tyranny. I don't want these people, uh, government agents, running around high on heavy drugs with firearms, of course. Mm -hmm. But then what they did is they tricked, us, they tricked everyone into becoming government agents and employees by the use of a social insurance number, now you're a government agent, now all of the rules, which are only supposed to apply to those people right. employed by the government, now apply to everyone. So when did that originally start with the rules for the government? With government. the social insurance number. Right from there. Okay. okay. Sure. Now, now, I, want to, I want you to no, understand. So the rules, sorry, the rules okay. originally started before the social insurance number. Now bear in mind that a lot of what you call rules, you might point to the Bills of Exchange Act. And that, that codifies uh, laws which have been in place for thousands of years. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the the Criminal Code of Canada. Therein you can find uh, the laws that uh, restrict you from uh, engaging in, uh, say, rape or any sort of violence against your fellow man or their property. Mm -hmm. These are proper laws. Right. But now they also have statutes. And anytime someone tries getting you to think that a statute is a law, they are trying to dumb you down and they're trying to get you to believe that this body of words is your law, and it's not unless you consent. Okay. Now, but I want you to understand your income tax, okay? Yeah. It only goes to pay, to allow the government to continue to borrow money, because that is what the IMF secured its lending. But not property taxes and not No, no, no. Gas but, but the, the gas tax, gas yeah. tax, and the property tax pays for things we need, and, and then the lottos pay for the school, uh, the hospitals. Yeah. Okay, so everything you want and you see as a benefit is taken care of. Uh, the income tax goes nowhere except back to the IMF because that's what they back their, 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 their security. That's their security to print money for Canada. Okay, Canada, you can have some more money because we're getting all this income tax act. What I'm trying to get to you is this. It is against the law for slavery, right? Mm -hmm. But if they're taking your labor money, they turned you into a slave. Okay, well, what about, they didn't always collect income tax, right? Exactly. In the States, they didn't use it. Now, it, what, it was in 1917. Did it just happen to coincide that they were at war, they needed money, right? So they said, okay, well, we'll just start taxing these certain people or something, right? Well, yeah, let me tell you what it's worded like. It was around 1917. They said the maximum money, amount of tax we'll take is 10%, uh, and I believe it was a three- or five-year commitment. Yeah. And it was volunteer, volunteer, uh, by voluntary only. For income tax. For, for you, and it was based upon voluntary compliance, t maximum of 10%, and I believe it was three to five years. You can look that up, 1917. Yeah. Well, here's what happened. Whenever the, remember GST was supposed to be three years or two years, yeah. remember? When has Although the... it was supposed to be, it was, it was supposed to be, it was supposed to directly pay for debt repayment. 
Yeah, but it was supposed to only be three years that. old. Oh, really? Okay. They said they were going to get... Uh, yeah. When it came in, Brian Mulroney brought that in? Yeah. I think he said it was going to be three years and then done. When has the government ever received something from us? Yeah. And, and, and then we're satisfied with that and then left well, it? No, by voting for them, you're accepting... That law, but right? let me ask you something. Who really likes paying income tax? But you don't no, 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 no. Answer my yeah. question. Who really likes paying income tax? I actually know people that like it. Okay, but very, <laughs> but I mean, percentage-wise, if we take 100%, how many people honestly would I'd not... i say it depends pay. where you go. Because, in, for example, in Scandinavia... 50%? Well, no, no, no. I'm talking about Canada. I don't okay, care about Canada, this. I would say probably... 50? Yeah, 50. 50, sure. 60% don't like it. Sure. They don't believe they're getting a benefit from it. They don't yeah. want it. If we rule by majority, if that was really true, if our government really worked by majority, then why is there still income tax when nobody likes it? But here's my question. If we didn't used to pay income tax, right? right. And now we do pay income tax, and they said that it was for, to pay for wars, yeah. it was to pay for this, it was Whatever for they said. What did countries do before? Oh, well, that's a good... Tax? How did they make money? How did they How did they get the roads and all that? I don't, I don't. Do they you know there's countries... borrowing their money from the international no bankers. bankers. They, but they printed still, their own. Didn't they, they still need money? Yeah, they printed but their own printed money. Their own money. They, pr they created enough money, put it in circulation, so that the people there would have enough The benefit of it. Okay, but, but now in order for us to do this very same thing, yeah. now we go to bankers and we say, please, can we have some of your money? But and saying, then we pay them interest. But back then, they still needed to pay the government workers. Yes. They still needed to employ... Do you know the, how the big the government was? They they still still do you remember how big the government was back then? And bear this in mind. No, no, no. <laughs> you can put money in circulation yeah. and pay interest on it, which is what we're doing now, and okay. you can never have enough money to pay off and the interest, or you can just put money in circulation without interest. So it doesn't matter. You can do either. But you're creating money from nothing, right? So they why, are. why they put are. interest on it? True, but if you're not collecting anything, how do you? How can you possibly mm -hmm. run a country? Well, wait a minute. What are they, how do they Income pay tax people? pays for nothing. Sales that tax. You... They would have sales they tax. Have they sales would have a sales tax. Excise tax. They would have goods and service, or not goods and services, but the uh, the excise tax when it came in. Right. And w they would have corporation taxes to pay for the, the military, essentially. The corporate tax would pay for the military. That's what they do now. Communities, and, and they would collect for their local schools, for their local communities. No, and I understand the local things are fine. Why don't you explain this to me? Why should we, when we need money, yeah. go to someone... And when and they say, okay, I'll give you money, but I want a bond from you first, promising me that you'll pay me back the money I give you with interest. And then we print up a bond, give it to them, and they say, okay, I recognize this as valuable. Now here's some money. Here's a hundred dollars. You have to pay me back a hundred and ten. Okay. Now, if the bond is valuable in this situation, yeah. why can't we? generate our own money that has the same value as the bond and not have interest attached. I don't know. I'll tell you why. Yeah. Because the bankers are greedy and they have their thumbs on the pulse. And if you have the power mm -hmm. to create money, who cares who makes the laws? You're exactly. the one generating the money. Agreed. The government and of Canada what their thing is. This, works their for the goal banks. is, in fact, to secure all of the resources of Canada. We're very rich. That's why they're doing it. If, imagine you've got a group of people sitting around playing cards. Yeah. A guy comes up, says, I'm going to be the banker, make your game much more interesting. I'm going to give you these chips, let's call them dollars. I'll give you each $10. Mm -hmm. I'm putting $100 on the table because there's 10 players. Yeah. Now, from each of you, I only want 11 back. I've created $100 out of nothing, but now I'm demanding $110, and that 10 doesn't exist. Eventually, someone has to leave the table. So, in other words, but nobody... But anybody at that table wouldn't agree to that, right? Well, we have agreed to it. But if it was put to us like that, why would we do it? We wouldn't, but they we didn't put it to it. But they hide it. Like that they, they give us this they big... Are deceptive. They decepted us and tricked us, and, and now they're in their own perpetual nightmare, and, and they're dragging us along. When we say they, we're talking about the IMF. Well, they're ultimately the cause, but our government is the reality that's allowing it to happen. And they could stop this at any time. And, and, you're, but, and you're confident that you think the governments know this? Absolutely they know this. My because they know they're borrowing money. The government has a lawyer and she knows it. They know this. know because you know it and you told her? No. They knew. <laughs> they knew before. Really? Listen, you can't borrow money at interest and not know what's going on. Your income, no. You paying income tax is hurting this country. If we all stop paying it, the, the IMF would foreclose. The government of Canada would be forced to print its own money. Problem solved. No, but if the IMF forecloses and they own us... They don't own anything. They only own our income tax. 
Okay. They don't own the land, man. What are they going to come down? Okay, well, let's pretend. What are they going to do? Fly in here with a bunch of men and walk around and say, we own the land now? We're taking the oil out of the ground? How long will that last? That's how wars start. Yeah. <laughs> and we'd say, and how did that happen in the first place? Oh, you were deceptive sons of bitches. Come here, we have jails for you. That's yeah. a fraudulent contract, isn't it? You see, if we expose the fraud, income tax is a sin. You, you got to stop paying it. Because you're part of the problem. Jesus. i got to learn some more. Yeah. But, but income tax is... You, you know what? I'm the one that works. I have to try to provide yeah. for my family. And when I was working paycheck to paycheck, I could have lived a much better life if 39% of it wasn't hacked off. Well, assuming you knew what to do with your money, you knew how to manage it. Well, even if I did know what to do, I could certainly do better with it. Yeah. If I had it in my pocket. People could live on a lot less money if the government wasn't hacking it off. Yeah. In income tax, they're hurting us. Our standard of living, although it can be high. Yeah. Is, the, is being just hacked to pieces because look at a guy with eight bucks an hour job, ten dollars an hour job. Yeah. How can he really live? Uh, if he got every dime of his efforts and work, he, he could he'd be a lot better. Those guys are barely taxed, actually. Well, <laughs> their tax is you, very low. That yeah, but the, you get to a certain point and the, the, you oh know yeah, what? I mean as it's a progression, right? Yeah. But those eight to ten hour guys, I don't know. I was there, yeah. you know, when I was a kid or whatever. I really got taxed. It was like no, because you're yeah, you know, students don't get taxed. I understand, and at a certain amount of money, you don't get yeah. taxed. But I'm talking an average guy, you know, working, you know, twelve, fifteen bucks an hour with a yeah. family, trying to get ahead. It's tough. Oh, for sure. But if he got every dime he worked for, it wouldn't be so tough. Now he may mismanage and he may do all those things, yeah. but at least it was all his responsibility. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's true. So, Thanks, Luke. All right, man. Yeah. For okay, sure. but, I'm but, gonna but, give but you, you might want to order a pound. I think we might be better off in the front, put it in the front. Oh, okay, you want it on the front? Well, just because the sun, eh? Landed in the name of Her Majesty. Because that's going to make sense when you read the last letter. Well, which box was last? Look at the bottom, it says the date you were commanded to appear. The top is small letters. Oh, and therefore commanded to appear before justice. Right. Oh, you dig right in there. You know, Luke, it's so funny. I remember in the seventh grade. Um, I was in a, a really small classroom, and my teacher was talking about the Queen of England and how, you know, she's, you know, and the Oh, it's, it's beside the sink, on the left of the sink. Uh, okay. The Commonwealth and whatnot, yeah. and how important the, you know, this Commonwealth is, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And I looked at my teacher and I said, <laughs> Who cares about the Queen? Because it gets too hot in the Seriously. Yeah. What does she got to do with any of this? Yeah, I know. And we had seventh grade. I mean, I'm 13 years old, right? And he looked at me and he was like, oh. <laughs> what did you say? Wait, he, got so, he got so angry. I mean, he was what a West Indian. West, I mean, the Caribbean, they're part of the Commonwealth as well, too, and stuff. So he obviously right. grew up in this type of, I mean, God rest his soul, because he's passed away now. But I remember saying that, and I was quite adamant about who cares about the queen. Mm -hmm. Honestly. Seriously, what has she done for me lately? Mm -hmm. And I think back now, and the stuff that I've learned a little bit, you know, just from, from being around Luke and some of the things that I've learned, I'm just like, I've had the right attitude all along, but I just didn't know about it until, you know, I've become, you know, a, you know, an adult and, and whatnot and just realize how the world works. And, and what's the queen? And all that. And you know when they're referring to the queen, they're not talking about the woman that's waving. They're talking about her corporation. Yes. Probably, yeah. They're not talking about her. And honestly, she... She just is this physical being. That's she is so trapped. Her. her life is so miserable. Come on. She can't go anywhere. No. She can't walk down the street. She, she, her life is, what? I would never, ever in a billion yeah, she years want that. She sits in the, um, the room all day long until she comes out and makes her appearances and, you know, gets pictures. It's coerced and it's staged. What, what will does she, could she even have? Yeah. She, had, she makes no money except what's given to her. Mm -hmm. hmm. They use her corporation and her figure, other people use it to make money. Right. She's a prisoner. Like if somebody said you, you have an invitation to meet the queen, I, I, I probably wouldn't even go. I just oh, I couldn't care less. I, could, I like, mean, like what is she? She's a. She's Why a, are we elevating her? It's, yeah. We're all equal. Yeah. yeah. I I just remember the look on his face. He was just so flabbergasted. What happened? But I've always I been, you know, what is it, hard headed and. <laughs> 
Maybe Part I'm getting rebellious <laughs> and growing up. Hmm. I love the reference to the cards. That's hilarious. I don't have fun with it. It just makes him mad, though. <laughs> Family, I'm going to tell you a story and then we're going to make some food. Here's the deal. Oh, we got chicken wings, man. Okay. All right. I go down to travel court. My wife gets a ticket. My wife, <clears throat> my wife gets three tickets. She was driving my Skyline down the road with the dealer plate on a Sunday. And she actually was looking at the, the speedometer. She, she, she was pretty adamant that she was doing 70 in a 70 zone. And the officer pulled her over, confirmed it. The officer walks up to her window and goes, yeah, I clocked you doing 70. And Maria's like, it's 70. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, yeah, but you're using a deal plate on a Sunday. And Maria goes, so? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's against the law. And then so he comes back. He, 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 says, he says, I'm not going to give you, there's no such thing. Of course not. I mean, dealerships are open on a Sunday, for God's sakes. Anyways. <laughs> the point is, is the officer. Well, I'm just. Yeah. It's blatantly. He was deal. very Christian. <laughs> so he says. <laughs> and then this is, he says, um, I'm not going to give you a ticket for the speed. Goes back to his car, but he comes back and he hands her two tickets. And on one ticket, there was two charges. Mm -hmm. One was doing 100 kilometers an hour in the in the 70 zone. What? And he says he clocked her. At 70. Well, he said 70 when he came to the window, but when he wrote out his ticket, he said, oh, I clocked you doing 100. They don't like your attitude, so... Yeah, yeah. it's more. They're going to penalize you for it. So then, he's, and then he put down section 131.1c, yeah. improper use of a dealer plate. And then another ticket for headlights not working on both... Headlights not working on both sides of the car, which was not true. I actually... Why did, you, why, why did they feel the need to... Usually when the cop pulls you over... He knows what he's pulling you over for, and that's what he gives you a ticket for. Why is she? They're, this is called a fishing charges? expedition. Why are they doing that to her? Well, what they, made them? They did that to me too. Why? Did, what made them want to do that? Right-hand car, dealer plate, or at night. That's enough justification in their mind because it's happened. That's how I ended up in jail. <laughs> Was the same sort of events. Yeah. So, anyways, like we get these tickets, and they're so ridiculous. I mean, you know, clocking. First of all, how's he gonna? When was his car verified? When was his speedometer checked? I mean, if there was a trial, these are questions I could ask and it would be thrown out. It, it, yeah, so they weren't provoked at all? It was no, like, she's just driving down the road and just pulled her over. It's a right-hand drive, Skyline. You know, who yeah, knows? You know, I've seen more vehicles like that yeah, nowadays. Yeah, like, that um, sure. but, but also remember, the police yeah. had to write 20 tickets each. Yeah, they have, they have, they have a quota. quota. It's their they they're not they're not considered to be doing their job if they don't. So they have a vested interest to perform these. Exactly. Things. Okay. These so terms. how you know whatever his reasons are, they were done. Yeah. And you know they were pretty outrageous. And I didn't know that I about I didn't know the proper process with being able to discharge them with letters that I do now know. Mm -hmm. So we decided ah oh, we'll sign the back. What are the options they get? Okay. So we signed the back. <laughs> While they were standing there. No, no, no. You, you signed the back of the ticket requesting the court. Or pleading not guilty. Or yeah, pleading not plead, guilty. Plead not guilty, yeah. going to court. Yeah. So I got her to sign them and I mailed them in and we get a court date. Okay. So now I've learned a lot since then, right? And I'm like, well, you know what? I'm going to go down there. And Maria goes, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And I says, okay, you come down with Tim. Uh, Tim's, yeah, Tim. Tim yeah. does uh, works with me. Uh -huh. He helps me prepare this stuff. Yep. Yeah, he He's helped. Him. Yeah, okay. Tim, Tim works for me full time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he came down as a witness in Marina, and they sat behind me, and I sat there with her father, and we watched the trial proceed in front of us. Now the trial in front of us was, um, wow. If there was any doubt that this court, that courthouse was just a sham, was there? I mean, oh, it, you, okay. you know, I, I can't express to you the, this poor guy who was just. Estimated speed again, some officer estimated his speed. And he's just trying to defend himself. And the prosecutor is berating him, <laughs> leading him, entering words into evidence that never were established when the officer was just making flat out making up stuff. Yeah. And this poor guy is trying to defend himself. And then the commissioner, they call him a commissioner, not even a judge, mm -hmm. on the bench, 
after that was done, actually started ridiculing him, saying, I'm not really impressed with the way you handled yourself. Now, I thought as a layman in there, trying to just swing it, I thought he handled himself really well. Yeah. I thought the prosecutor acted like a spoiled, ignorant child. Yeah. Really. And, 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 I, and I thought, wow, this, this, this is really sad. Anyway, so I wait for, they call Maria's name. Mm -hmm. okay. They call Maria, my wife, Maria Procopolis. So I stand up, you should have seen the computer. You're not Maria. <laughs> Who are you? And I says, I, and I just, and I'm going to tell you guys the truth. I had no game plan. I had, I only, I only knew that I was going to claim to be the administrator. And beyond that, I had no idea what I was going to do. Okay. Honestly, I, I didn't, I didn't even dawn on me at the time to ask for a bill. I would like to see a bill because that would be the next step yeah. now that I would realize. Mm -hmm. So, but I walk up, I go, I'm the administrator for this matter. The commissioner, the guy on the bench, pipes up right away, all confused, and he's angry. Administrator? What does that mean? And I said, again, I'm the administrator for this matter. What does that mean? And he's getting angry, and I said, I'm the administrator. What does that mean? And I says, I'm the administrator for number, and I read the number. Jesus, stop saying that. <laughs> what is it you're here to do? Are you her husband? Are you agent? Are you getting paid? Are you here to plead guilty? Not guilty? What is it? You're having a trial? What is it you're here to do? And so I really calmly just looked at the prosecutor standing right there and says, I don't know yet. I haven't spoken to him. I don't know what his intentions are yet. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. I, I've had enough of you. Get get out of my room. I'm sending you to another courtroom. Get out. Uh, I don't like your attitude. I don't like the way you were sitting there, your cell phone going off. It vibrated during the other trial. And he said, just get out of my courtroom. Okay. So I wait. They go all adjourned. The bailiff comes over. Like I'm waiting to see what's going to happen. So I'm sitting there and the bailiff comes over. Because my, I told my wife and Tim, don't stand up when they say I'll rise. Yeah. Because I don't want to bow to their, I don't want them to think I'm in their jurisdiction. So that was the stand. That was a pretty crowded room, but they, they didn't notice I didn't stand, I guess. But they noticed that my wife and Tim didn't stand. The bailiff leans over, and I'm sitting in front. front. Yeah. Oh, and I look back, and he says, you guys have to stand when, he, the, when, the, when the judge comes in. And I lean back and go, show me the law that says we have to. <laughs> it's called contempt of court. I go, that's a consequence. That's not a law. Can you show me? You're going to see patterns if you don't stand up. Go stands back there with his gun and stands there. Well, then, anyways, it gets handed off to the prosecutor. Right. And the prosecutor hands it to another prosecutor. From the point that it got handed to me, that prosecutor in that room that we were just in points to me, and the other prosecutor was the officer here, and he was there in plain clothes. He goes running over there, and we're kind of figured that we followed him, and they never even told me which courtroom. We just followed him into the other courtroom. We went from 113 to 114. Now this courtroom's empty, except for one lady. She's sitting by herself over there. The bailiffs from that room come follow us into this room. And so we sit down. So it's me with Maria and Tim behind me again. And I got the file. And the prosecutor there and this lady. And um, all adjourned, all right. Courts adjourned, all rise. Blah, blah, blah is coming in, the commissioner. Uh, prosecutor. Or commissioner. Commissioner. <laughs> so we're sitting there, and he doesn't notice that we're not standing. Because he's looking, and then he turns to say, I'll be seated. And he's looking at me, and I'm looking at him. <laughs> and he says, fine, stay seated. And then he sits down. Whoa. And the bailiff, the bailiff came up the aisle and was standing beside him, waiting for the judge to give him directions to haul us yeah. up. Right. He says, fine, stay seated. So they call up this one lady. There's two people in the courtroom. There's us and this lady. And they call her up, and she's going to pay, and she leaves. All a court adjourned, and Commissioner Burns off the bench. She's gone. So I'm sitting there going, There's home. come on, let's get this thing over with, right? And the prosecutor doesn't talk to me, but the lady in the robe, the, the one that says, all rise? Yeah. She skipped. Oh, you guys stand when he comes into the room. And I said, show me the law that says I have to. She turns right around and sat right back down. Didn't even want to talk to me anymore. The bailiff, the bailiff turns to Tim. Do you, have, do you have business here? Tim goes, well, no, I'm just an interested party. Fine, you're under arrest. And Tim goes, uh, um, I don't consent to that. And he goes, you're under arrest. And then I says, okay, go with them under protest and duress. And Tim goes, yeah, okay, I'll go with you under protest and duress. 
Then Maria gets stands up to get out of the way because he. Yeah. Okay. And then he turns to her and goes, "Are you an accused here?" And she goes, "Well, I don't know. That's why we're here." Okay, you two under arrest. And so, the, and I'm sitting there confused. They're out in the hallway, and I'm, I sat there for about a minute and a half, and I'm like, "This is ridiculous." Yeah. So I go out there, and then and, uh, and what happened in the hallway? Tim and Maria said they basically said we want ID. They both said we don't consent to that. We don't agree to that. And then they. Fine, leave the building. Fine, leave the building. Yeah. You're under arrest. Give me ID. I don't consent. Fine, leave. Yeah. So then when I walk out in the hallway, I see the two bailiffs kind of muscling them out the door. Yeah. So I go out the door, and I said, I said, well, what's going on? They go, well, we were told to leave. I go, what? That's it? Yeah, we got to leave. I go, you got to leave. Because I was confused. I thought they were under arrest. Right. And then I said, okay. So I turned to the other two bailiffs. This is, this is a public building. This is a court of law. This isn't a public building, this is a court of law. I'm like, uh -huh. okay. So then I, I go back into the room and the officer in plain clothes is there and he's confused. He's like, who do you think you are? I says, well, I'm the administrator for this account. He goes, account? What do you mean account? And I says, yeah, you gave my wife some bills. I, I, I don't, I never gave her any bills. I go, yeah, I'm sorry you're ignorant of that fact. But yeah, you gave her bills. I don't write bills, I write summons. And I says, really? Show me the word summons. I said, show me the word summons anywhere on your bill. It's right on the front. I go, no, it's not. Show it to me. It's there. And he runs out of the courtroom. Literally. <laughs> runs out of the courtroom. So, okay, so I sit back down with my file. I don't even know what's going to happen now. Yeah. And, and then and it, I was in there 20 seconds. The bailiff comes up, puts on his leather gloves. Okay, you too. And I'm like, what do you mean me too? You're next. Out of here. Oh. Escorted okay. me right out into the street. <laughs> now, I'm standing, oh, I'm standing out in the street now. Yeah, I'm standing out in the street with Maria and Tim. <laughs> and they go, well, what do we do now? And I go, you know what they're going to do? They're going to reconvene court. They're absence. going to call your name twice, and they're going to charge you in your absence. And, and Tim said, no way. I says, fine. Not even a week later, conviction in her absence in the mail. Mm. So I swore out an affidavit to what I just told you. Yeah. And uh, attached a letter saying how this is a perversion of justice or any form of that yeah. you're pretending to have. Right. You can't you can't summons me to your court and then have armed men out. throw me out yeah. in the street and then convict me and uh, demand payment. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I wasn't there when I was on the record as being there. Being there, yeah. Now, I didn't know why they reacted that way and lost their nut oh. because I said I'm the administrator, so I was having this conversation with Robert. So just the right thing. Didn't well, you? Robert said to me, do you know why I got angry? I go, I don't have a clue. Because it couldn't be that he didn't understand what administrator meant. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, the guy's an educated person. And, and Robert says it's because it's called an administrative tribunal. When you stand up and go, I'm the administrator, you're you basically telling the guy in the bed you're fired. <laughs> I don't need you. Oh and that's why he reacted that way. Because he doesn't know what the hell to do. He's yeah. like, what do you mean? You can't be the administrator. People are walking into the courtroom knowing this type of information. They're just going with it. They're just yeah. going with it. Because they're well, because like, they've oh, been, they've been Because we think that there's remedy. We think there's remedy. Yeah. Because you signed the back of the, how many times you get a Fine. ticket that makes you angry? You're like, I don't deserve it. I've got lie. Well, I love on, on the back of the ticket, it even says voluntary payment option. Yeah. But if you're voluntary, <laughs> but voluntary if you read those violation yeah. tickets, there's 20 different things telling you how to pay, if you want to pay, yeah. how, what, what payments will be. They I, want money. I don't yeah. want to pay. Show me where it says yeah. I have to pay. And if you don't want to pay, well, at your expense, in the most difficult location to get to in Calgary, where okay. there's no place to park, park yeah. mm -hmm. where it's right in the middle of the worst conjected place, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you could show up there and fight at your expense. Oh, and the officer's going to be paid overtime <laughs> yeah, to, show, to up, show up, and the whole system is going to make money whether you win yeah, or lose. Exactly. And by the way, you're in dishonor. So you oh yeah, and you're in dishonor when you walk in the door, so they're only looking at you like tell, a delinquent. Tell them what they do yeah. with the ticket, with the original copy, how they send that in. If you pay, well, if you, if we recognize that that's a bill, <laughs> if you look up the bill of exchange and you look up the definition of it, yeah. a violation ticket is actually a bill of exchange. Yeah. It's a bill. So the thing now, it's a is bill. Money. Now, here's the thing. That's That's right. If they're giving, if you, rec if you say to the officer who comes up to your car window, after you've given him your information and he comes back with the ticket, yeah, 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 you can say, I'm a human being. I'm a human being. I recognize that as a bill under the Bills of Exchange Act. I want the original, please. You see, they have to present if they're giving if you if if you identify yourself as a human being they must give you the original. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, they always gave you the coffee when uh -huh. you yeah. see their yeah. signature yeah. and like what the charge was. And that's and all when you're in dishonor because as a human being, you shouldn't be accepting a coffee. Yes. And you're not dealing with it as a true bill. Right, right. You yeah. can't dispute yeah. a true bill. Uh, it's back in the possession of the person who created it and signed it. And you, they've got your signature on it, evidence that it was in your possession. Yeah. And you didn't. Well, actually, you never actually, signed actually here, here we never sign. Here sign we don't enough. sign. You don't sign. That's, that is because they're the dealing with a fiction, fiction yeah. and yeah. there is no requirement to present to a fiction. That's why part of it is say, I'm a human being. Yes. I'm not right. a fiction. Right. That's a bill. So yeah. now, if they, the, yeah. the police officers aren't going to know. He's going to be confused. You know, one, one person, he said, oh, you can see the original in court. And, and throws in the copy. So what you do is you go to a notary and swear that you know, you asked for but never received the original. Yeah. You only have a copy, mm -hmm. and that and they're going to send off a, doc, a letter saying I want the original so I can pay you home and I want to see the contract obligating me to be in, in contract with you to pay this bill. Right. Yeah. Now what happens is that the system that gets these tickets they want their money. If they're separate from the police. Right. When you've done that, and they still want to get paid, they're going to make the police officer pay, because he's got the original, and then they got his signature on it. He's liable for his own ticket. If we make enough officers pay their own ticket, they're not going to they write them. them. When they see us go, human being, bill, want original, oh, close the book, get out a warning book. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the more we get educated, now, yes, the better it is for them, because the police are hated, they know they're hated, yep. nobody likes them. Yeah. Because they write these tickets, honestly, that's the biggest reason. And they don't want to write them. Either. They don't want to write them, but they have to because that's the job they're in. They yeah. think they got a good pension they in the trap. They get penalized. Though. They, they didn't go to the police force to write tickets. To be a glorified no, no, tax they collector. They want to, they right. want to get bad people off exactly. the street. And they they want to okay. I believe a lot of them if have we, intentions. If the they go yeah. back to their superiors and say, I'm not paying my own tickets anymore, I'm not writing tickets anymore. Then they're going to go back to doing what they were supposed to do and protect the peace. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then they yeah. will be like, like the firemen are like. Yeah. Oh, because yeah. people will say, oh, there's a friendly officer. Yeah. Yeah. And he's not lasering me and pretending that yeah, I'm doing what, something. What you were telling them, that if you pay that coffee, if you send in your $250 fine, they take the original to the Solicitor General or the Minister I of believe that. I'm not 100 percent sure on that, but I believe that they get paid twice. When you pay them, yes. you take the original and go reimburse it and get paid again. That's what Mary Crawford That's right. Yeah. What? Yes. Right. They, they double dip twice. They get paid yeah. twice. They get paid twice. Right. It is a money making racket. That's all. If they weren't double dipping, what would be the big deal? Well, they get it out of your bond. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. You see, we're, we're just being conned and duped and misled and yeah. and uh, smoke and mirrors. It's like a big comedy show mm -hmm. with with some sleight of hand, and we've just been tricked. Yeah. It's our parents told us we need a driver's license and then the school. They thought so. And they told us we needed the same number if you wanted to work and, well, and we got until you're sixty-five because you get your pension. Yeah, you're <laughs> they, yeah, well they you pretend they're giving you benefits. Right. Yeah. They pretend that oh by paying taxes all year you might get a refund back. Yeah. Your own money back. That's yeah, the con whatever. that life insurance is okay. due too. Yeah. Life insurance yeah, yeah. make you overpay mm -hmm. and then give you a rebate of your own money back and make and you a think fashion. you have a good yeah. And, yeah. They, and you think you've got a good deal. You get a good deal. Come yeah. on. Manage your finances. Look at what's going well, on. Well we yeah. become invested in it and so then we don't want to admit that we see that it's that's human Yeah. yeah. And, and you know what, would we need welfare if people could earn their wages, their, all their wages, and mm -hmm. take home all their money. Yeah. Our standard of living would go up, our economy Huge. would go up, yeah. people would buy more, they, you know, it would be better for everybody. Uh, but yeah. the government would actually have to go up and do work. stuff. They'd actually, <laughs> actually, actually have to That's get a right. job. I'll give you an example. Now, this was in the U.S., but I'm sure you guys can relate it to our government as well. There was a, the, you know how the U.S. has these auctions? Oh, for, um, seize, drugs, seize, drugs, seize, seize, okay. Yeah. They, the, the, this was in Florida, I believe. They were running their own auction house. So the, the, so the government agents would seize Probably. goods yeah. that cost them, well, you know, they're not paying for these goods. They were seized. Not, and, you know, they'd arrest the drug dealer, take his house, his car, his boat, yeah. Yeah, yeah, everything. and take him to the auction. For every dollar they collected at their auction when they were running it, it they spent a dollar twenty. Wow. We're not making any money on they were, they were, It was costing them money yeah. to run it. They handed it over and decided, for whatever reason, they decided to hand it over to a private company. So they would still seize everything, mm -hmm. but just shove it over to this private company and then they would sell it. the company would take what it 
you know, it would, would compensate itself and then give the rest to the government. They would make, it cost them 20 cents for every dollar they collected. Mm -hmm. Wow. Imagine. Just by changing hands. Same, same system. It's just, see, the reason why I believe the government cannot function mm -hmm. is because there's no accountability. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, imagine I, I gave you a job and then I give you a budget. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't spend all that budget, mm -hmm. then I would lower it. Yeah. So whether you needed that much money or not be, didn't become the point. The point was to spend it. Spend all and, and it wasn't your money, so and you'd get always get it. So you get more next year. Yeah. Well, that's how the government, that's how schools work. That's how the government works. That's how every, they're given a budget. And if you don't spend it, you're not getting the same budget. Well, that's what Pierre exposed, my, the one, my cousin in Ottawa, mm -hmm. exposed that the government was um, renting out a warehouse, an empty Warehouse for half a million dollars a month. Well, yeah. yeah. Half for over just to cover for over a year. And it was another. It was this another liberal. Right. That that place to spend the belonged money to, money money. to a liberal senator. He owned it. A liberal senator owned it, yeah. and and the liberal That's government right. was renting off him for five hundred thousand dollars a month, and it was empty for a year and a half. That res that needs charges. That well, should result in charges. Well, that's when liberals got and, out. And, and Pierre exposed that. It got into the newspapers, but but you know how they. They yeah, travel, they mm -hmm. you know, they, you know, 350 grand for one year for a parent government things, but they stay at the best hotel, blah, 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 all on our, on the money that comes from taxpayers dollars. our yeah. taxpayer dollars. Yeah. And the thing is, is there's no accountability. Yeah. They put, well, then they push it off to the next year. Well, what did, what did Cretchen, what did Cretchen say? What did say? That's only a billion dollars? No, no, three billion. Yeah, yeah. No, no, when, when the Ministry of Finance lost a billion dollars. I thought it was three billion. No, it was a billion. And, and yeah. he said, and he said, ah, it's only a billion dollars, we can get more. You run a corporation and then say, I lost 100 grand, no, I'm sorry, I don't know where it is. You'd be charged with embezzlement. You'd go to jail for a very long time. Mm -hmm. For a very long time. Misappropriation of funds or embezzlement, you'd go to jail. The bottom line is, the free man on the land, we, we have to take accountability for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we can't make them hold accountability until they act upon us in a wrong way, and then we can. Yeah. We can't change the system from voting within it, from getting yeah. elected. We, we can't. So you're not doing any of that. Because obviously, I don't want. Be I don't. Of, you can't fix the system. system from being in the system. Yeah. It's like there's a big, huge mud puddle, and there's a bunch of people in the middle of it running stuff. Yeah. And you think you're going to climb into that mud puddle and then Same and then thing. fix it and clean it up? Yeah. Yeah. No way. The only way you're going to hose down the government is standing on the shore saying, "I'm not in your game." And oh, by the way, here's some soaps and studs because yeah. we're cleaning you up. Yeah. We have. We, I'm not paying you taxes because I don't want to be. I don't want to support your nonsense. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to support war. Mm -hmm. um, I, I care about my fellow man to well, the point where I even care about fellow men who don't live, live don't live in my country. Mm -hmm. And I don't care what you claim they did. I don't believe your words. Yeah. But the truth is, is every time you pay your taxes, what you're indirectly saying is, I believe in what you're doing. Yep. You're supporting. Yeah. You so have in, my in permission to do right. what you will with that's yeah. exactly. I know you're doing something yeah. better with my and I, and I don't, yeah. Yeah. I don't mind paying property tax. I don't mind paying property tax for where they go. Mm -hmm. Because I, I, I do have well, children in school, so I, I am, I am but agree. But I'm not accepting the government by paying those. I am, and I'm going to make a specific letter. By my paying property tax, I believe that I'm receiving a value for those. Yes. That I'm contributing to my community in yeah. a standard that, that I believe supports it. But I am not in your box simply by doing that. I also will pay a fuel tax at the pump. I won't use my tax exempt card there because I believe that that is for roads and I do want nice roads. Yeah. Don't okay. call it a tax then. Call it anything but. Yeah, call it a fee. Road, a road usage fee. Yeah. yeah. I, will, I will refer to a road usage fee and I will. Call it consideration. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Then you have a contract. Mm. Consideration. So you use words that they don't want. You got to be careful with your words, and that's. Well, that's what lawyers do. I mean, that's, that's how they win on those cases. Right? The, the choice of the words that they use, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And how they present it. Like, Ultra who's virus, better? Virus. How do you say it, babe? All the bad tactics. Who has better tactics? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tactician. Not about yeah. the truth. Not about the truth. No. But when you're a free man on the land, it is statutes, so bylaws, acts—they have no control or control. Or control. There's no control for you kids. Yeah. Yeah, double <laughs> <laughs> I looked at it, it didn't bother me. Just those are my initials. Oh, okay. Those are my initials now. My nickname when I was growing up was Lukey Bond. Because oh, wow. I had grappling hooks yeah. and I had all this <laughs> stuff and I was flying fox and that's what was my nickname. Okay, okay. That's funny. That's how the kids fantasy. We wanted to jump off the roof of the umbrella and stuff like that.
Yeah. 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 Yeah.